Hey everyone, welcome back to Crypto Cash. Thank you so much again for joining me here. I hope you're having a great day. One more look at Sui. Do I say it right? Or do you put less emphasis on the back? Uh, Sui? I don't know. I like to say SUI because it's an acronym and I generally try to trade acronyms uh, more so ticker symbols instead of actually <laughs> whatever the whatever it means. I think it means water in some foreign language, right? Uh, anyways, while we're here, the reason why we're looking at this, of course, is uh, to talk about this bearish rectangle that while it's already played out, you got to recognize that the lower range or upper range, whichever side you retest, will generally work as a support resistance. So in this case here, we can presume that $2 will still be that resistance level for us, unless we can close soundly above it. Now you're probably scratching your head and you're like, wait a minute, the price went all the way up to 205, what's going on? Well, the truth is the daily candlestick is probably gonna close below $2 at this point. And that's generally uh, unfavorable. That implies that that resistance level is still present. So keep in mind, there's a lot of little things we're gonna look at here. So please stick around through to the end and make an evaluated decision instead of maybe watching a couple minutes and be like, man, this guy is full of crap because you just hear what you wanna hear. Every analysis is dynamic and different. And if you really wanna learn how to be a better trader, I feel like I'm a good resource. I've trained a lot of graduates that have moved on to do this as their full-time job. So cryptocash.tech is a site if you want access to my trading academy, community, or signals group. Regardless of that, let's look at liquidation levels first. Liquidation is important. It just kind of helps us give a barometer of where everyone is um, potentially going to get destroyed or just what the overall sentiment is. Because again, when there's high leverage at specific areas, it implies it's probably a support or resistance, but also implies that market makers are going to push the price in that direction. And yes, market makers do exist, folks. I can assure you that the price is not dropping right now because of people like you and I. If it was up to people like you and I, the price would probably be in the $500, $600 range because people just keep buying and buying and buying. Uh, the ones that actually sell are the ones that have tons of money. So yes, it's a very real thing. Um, anyways, I mentioned that just because some people have a tendency of uh, thinking that that's, that's incorrect, but that's, that's okay. You know, you, you learn and you live, right? So take a look here. Last seven days on the left-hand side, we can see there's the heaviest concentration as per usual down at 155. Keep in mind, with this being the last seven days, this liquidation level is occurring there. It really just implies that those are really low leverage longs, okay? And that's actually good. I love to see that. That, that, that really tells me that some people are taking it serious and not taking crazy high leverage longs. Uh, there are higher leverage longs here at about 186 to 185, maybe 184. Potential to get swept there, that's the local bottom. But again, that's just something to be mindful of. We're right in the middle of all this liquidation, so it really doesn't matter too much. It doesn't tell us a lot. What it does tell us here on the macro is that SUI has more room for downside potential, again. That's just the potential. It doesn't mean it's going to happen, but you want to be mindful that 160 will work as a magnet if we end up losing this 185 and or that 175 range. Okay. Now let's take a look here. We got liquidation delta is starting to balance itself out. So this is a good sign. This really implies that we may be able to sustain this price action and establish higher highs and or higher lows, but we haven't done that yet. We got somewhat of a bull flag or bull pennant pattern. We'll talk about that in a minute, but at this point with this dissipating, it shows that there's more strength uh, starting to grow with longs versus shorts because the amount of shorts are, are dissipating. And a lot of that ha happens because they either A, get liquidated or they close their position and uh, you can see more, more longs coming in. But we're also seeing it kind of taper off and start to bottom out, but we still have a higher leveraged amount of shorts in the market implying that there's still a little bit more selling pressure likely at that $2 range. So we take a look here, open interest, 213 is the local open interest there. We zoom in a little bit. We got some longs in profit about 193, okay? So prior to that, we probably got some, some people underwater and then some other folks here recently that kind of averaged in at lower price points. Open interest is just helpful to understand where people are taking their positions. So we take a look here though. Let's compare this really quick with Bitcoin because uh, you know, in case you weren't familiar, this is a very good thing to do. Understanding the correlation between altcoins and Bitcoin. Now it's never an exact science and a lot of times you get an eye for it after a while just realizing how good or poorly poorly uh, you know, paired they are. So we look at Bitcoin. Bitcoin's looking pretty strong here, looking like it probably wants to maintain that $67,000 range. More propensity to go up than down based on a macro perspective, right? So we're gonna look at the macro for SUI and double check to make sure that's still present there. I think we still are respecting our ascending trend, but I could be wrong. Uh, sorry, I do look at a lot of charts throughout the day. We'll double check that. And again, the whole concept of looking at Bitcoin here is you can, you can see higher highs and higher lows. Every time the price action hits a higher high, it comes down to the recent low and essentially bounces. So you can see kind of a staircase, right? So hypothetically, it should continue to do this. That's what a good continuation pattern will do. In fact, that's what SUI did for weeks, honestly, to get to this point. So when we look at that and we compare that with, with uh, SUI, we can see that there was somewhat of a shift in momentum once the price hit 205. 
In other words, a market maker, strong likelihood that's who it was, I guarantee it wasn't you and I selling at 205, the price action pulled back pretty significantly. We see an increase in volume, price pulls down, comes up to establish lower highs. Uh, while this is potentially a positive sign, if you kind of want to stretch it, um, there's a lot more negative here too, and I'll, I'll, I'll describe that here in a minute. But once more, this could be a good thing once we find our bottom. If we do, the, the hypothetical bottom is 195 because that's what, what was the previous high. Okay, previous highs should work as new lows. So in this case here, we may see that be a potential pivot, but it's looking less likely. We see a stronger divergence here with SUI than we do with Bitcoin. See a small correction from Bitcoin, large correction from SUI. Usually not a good com combination, all right? So again, those are just little things that I tend to look at when I analyze the charts. Uh, again, do I make a decision based on that one thing? Absolutely not. I simply want to understand generally what that looks like. So at this point here, the general consensus, I would say, easy way to understand it, is that $2 even is still a resistance level. Regardless of us waking up to 205, it means nothing. Today's daily candlestick, if we close below $2, we can reaffirm that as a resistance, okay? Same thing here as well. RSI getting closer to 50, we lose that. Likelihood of pushing down lower to those lower liquidation levels. Money flow index has been remaining below the RSI this entire time. I do not like that. That's usually an unfavorable sign. It shows weakness because it basically tells us there's more money flowing away from this coin than there is a good conception of value. Who do you think has a good conception of value when they invest in these coins? People like you and I, the layman. Market makers see this and they laugh and they realize that, hey, we got people are selling. Uh, we're going to continue to sell until people hit this, you know, this, this, this extreme pain. As soon as everybody starts shifting bearish, then they go bullish. Okay, it's a really common occurrence. Anyways, that's how RSI kind of ties into the money flow index. It's uh, not easy to describe, but once you understand the general consensus uh, or the general idea, the concept, of, rather, uh, it, it, it makes a little more sense. Uh, key takeaway here is that we're not over 50 on the RSI. So while this little uptrend was nice. Uh, we weren't able to sustain above that, telling us there's a lot of resistance, i.e. $2 even. Same thing with money flow index that is increasing, which is positive, showing us last two and a half trading days, last, uh, what, 14 four-hour candles. We're looking to be in better shape than we were previous. Of course, it's going to be a good highlight if you compare that, uh, you know, to, to the, the last 14 candles, right? So anyways, that whole money flow index being right there in the center doesn't give me a lot of confidence. Last but not least, we take a look here. We're below what majority of the important moving averages are at least up below the 50 we're testing the 20 sma and the, the 200 is trailing behind so at this point here while we have you know we were establishing a higher low tentatively it still isn't really a strong continuation so let me take a quick look at this macro trend this is what i want to talk about here do you see that the 20 day sma there that's been above the price action for roughly two and a half maybe three days we we're below that ascending trend okay What's most common about this is for the price action to perform a bearish back test of that ascending trend and to continue lower. So statistically at this point, based on that and a few other things we've seen here so far, SUI has a higher propensity of retracement than it would continuation. Now you gotta recognize too, Bitcoin does look fairly bullish. So there's a solid chance we could see SUI maintain its range and go higher based on the simple sense that you know, the market should go up. However, that comes with a caveat here in the sense that you know, SUI is poorly paired with Bitcoin. If Bitcoin pulls back, what happens to SUI? It'll probably pull back 2x of Bitcoin. So again, those are all little things you kind of got to recognize. There's no exact science to any of it, but statistical probabilities are higher here for the price to go down than up. However, let's take a quick look at the hourly here. This is where conflicting information occurs, uh, or at least it's easy to identify conflicting uh, scenarios here. So when we look at this here, um, this can be construed as a bullish sign. Keep in mind, we're probably due to, to, to bounce off this 195. If I was a betting man, 195 would be a solid pivot point here. Again, that's based on the premise I think Bitcoin is going to go higher. However, if we take a look here and we recognize the lagging span, it's soon to intersect. Conversion line is getting closer to the baseline. And while we're above the cloud, we're kind of not really. We're kind of like merging into it. These are all signs here letting us know it's not worth taking a long or a short. Okay, so if you're a trading addict and you have to trade, 195 seems like a sensible place to consider a long, but that's only based on the simple fact that I feel Bitcoin is going to continue higher and that was a local high, should work as a new low for us. But majority of the other signs here are letting us know that we got kind of a conflicting situation here and that taking a trade would be a bad idea, okay? So again, you, know, you, can, you can get mad at me all, all you want about telling you you probably shouldn't trade this coin right now, um, but the truth is it, it's looking a little too dicey to feel confident and comfortable taking, taking a trade with it. 
That's just my, my thoughts here. But again, I'm always gonna shoot you straight and tell you how I think it is. I'll post our playout chart here on our Twitter, Telegram, and Discord. It looks a little something like this if you're not familiar. Or i just give you some scenarios on what I feel is going to happen. And last thing you wanna to do too is obviously check out Big Index, folks. These guys are phenomenal. Awesome exchange link down below uh, for a deposit rewards. If you use my link to register, you'll always be eligible for this. And they give us like one or two basically a promotion every couple of months. So uh, if you're part of our community, you'll know that. But if you're not, feel free to join up and looking forward to work with you. Cryptocash.tech is a site if you want to become a better trader. We'll see you in the next one. Take care.